A lot of new laws take effect at midnight, including SB 101, the Botox bill, which is now law. Board certified plastic surgeon Stephen Miller joins us with what this new law means to you and for the medical industry. Dr. Miller, how are you? I'm doing great today. Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. So talk about, uh, for people that don't know, what are the current regulations uh, for people wanting to get Botox? Well, it's really amazing. As popular as Botox and filler is mm -hmm. in, in, in this country, it's the number one and number two cosmetic procedure performed, there's very little regulation in our state. And, okay. and really, anyone under their supervision of a doctor, for the most part, medical assistants, estheticians, dental hygienists, at this point, till midnight tonight, uh -huh. can do these injections. And then after that, they can no longer do them. That, that is correct. Okay. As, of, uh, as of July 1st, okay. SB 101 goes into effect, which will regulate who, which medical professionals will be able to perform these injections and where these injections can be performed. Why do you think this bill took place? It turned into a law. I know it was heated. Uh, it, it, what are the dangers? Well, I think, I think people need to understand it really wasn't meant to be a turf battle. This is about patient safety. Okay. Um, as these procedures got more and more popular and as we did deep fills, complications can occur. Mm -hmm. um, complications can be minor and, and can be an, uh, an infection or, or a poor cosmetic outcome or mm -hmm. even a droopy lid, which will resolve. But you can get an intravascular injection, and with that, someone can have a stroke, blindness, or tissue loss. Wow. And, and we have seen these in our offices where, where there's been complications that have required surgery. So it's really important for someone to be a properly trained medical professional mm -hmm. who understands the facial anatomy, understands proper injection techniques, and um, understands, quite frankly, what to do when a complication does occur to resolve it. Yeah, because I mean, this could it could be it could be good and bad for uh, a, like a plastic surgeon because it could mean more work for you, which it could be good, but it can also be bad because you have other procedures that are probably of a little bit higher, maybe not so higher importance, but more it takes more time to do. Uh, from my perspective, it, it would be good for my office, okay. um, but I don't think it was about whether it's good or bad. Mm. For, for me, I think it's whether it's good or bad for the patients. And sure. I do think it's going to really improve patient safety in our community okay. and probably was long coming. It probably should have happened a long time ago. There was something that was, I know, talked about with, uh, in, in the uh, legislature about the dental industry and who can do it. Can dentists still do it? So under SB 101, the medical professionals who will be allowed to do the injections mm -hmm. and they will not be able to delegate it to someone else, unless they're part of this list, will be a physician, okay. a physician assistant, an RN, an advanced practitioner RN, a dentist, or a podiatrist. Oh, okay. But the dental and podiatry boards will have to have them go on to further specific training to be able to do these injections properly. But this is who our state has defined okay. to understand the anatomy well enough to yeah. do these injections safely. Sounds safe. Final question, what happens if they don't adhere to the, the new law? Well, I'm not the police officer, <laughs> but basically from what I understand, it will be a misdemeanor, okay. um, uh, which can in, in, mean six months in jail or up to a thousand dollar fine, okay. but it will also be reported to the medical for, for board or, or whichever board for that person, mm -hmm. and there will be potential for professional discipline. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you for it. having me on yeah. the show. Absolutely. I